Hello, I'm Tim Mao with XWrite, and in this video, I'm going to be introducing you to our CI7000 series of Sphere benchtop spectrophotometers. We'll be looking at the different models within the series, as well as showing you some of their features and functions. So let's get started. So on the screen now, you're seeing pictures of four different instruments that are part of the CI7000 series. From left to right, the 7500, the 7600, the 7800, and finally the CI7860. As we move from left to right, we have a change and an increase in capabilities. The far left, the CI7500, that instrument is reflectance only. So no transmission chamber. That's why it looks a bit different than the others. But as we go, go from left to right, we also increase capabilities and even increase precision. And so let's take a look at that a little more in depth. So here you see a, a spec sheet, part of a spec sheet anyway, comparing the four different devices. And we're going to start with the 7500. Um, and as we go from left to right, um, the instruments to the right contain everything the instruments to the left do. They just keep adding more. So let's build, starting with 7500. And we point out something I pointed out earlier. It's a reflectance only instrument. So no transmission measurements, but if all you're doing are reflectance measurements, maybe that doesn't matter to you. Um, you'll see listed things like its inner instrument agreement, um, its uh, aperture plates that are available. You'll see it has two, um, one UV filter at 400 nanometers, for example, um, and that's the 7500. Now we go to the 7600, a step up, and I've highlighted things that have changed. So. For example, um, we add another standard reflectance aperture plate, six millimeter. And optionally, you can add the 3.5 and the 17, but standard, it comes with that one extra one. We also add the standard transmission apertures because the 7600 has the ability to do both reflectance and transmission. And we've also highlighted the UV filters because in the 7600, we add a 420 and 460 nanometer filter to the 400 nanometer filter that exists in the 7500. Those might be important to you if you're measuring things that are optically brightened or you need to control UV content of the light source. So that's the 7600. Moving along, we go to the CI 7800 and we've highlighted again what's changing from the 7600. The first thing we note is that the inter-instrument agreement number has dropped significantly. So really briefly, what do we mean when we talk about inter-instrument agreement? We're talking about the average delta E across a series of BCRA tiles um, used to identify how well do two instruments of the same model agree with each other? What's the difference their measurements might have? And you can see we've gone from 0.15 with the first two devices to 0 0.08 with the CI7800. Additionally, we've added a standard 17 millimeter reflectance and transmission aperture. And that instrument also has a, um, goes a little further in precision in the ability to go to five nanometer data if that's necessary. And then finally, we take a look at the CI7860. That device being the top of the line um, best in class for a benchtop device as far as inner instrument agreement is concerned at 0.06. And you might think 0.06 is not that much better than 0.08, but it's a 25% improvement. And if you have something where you have an extremely tight tolerance, let's say your delta E tolerance is 0.25, then a 0.06 inner instrument agreement might, might be significant if you're going to have multiple instruments in your workflow taking measurements. You want to reduce that variation as much as possible. And the CI7860 gives us that ability. So that's an overview of the products. This information and more detail as well is available on our website. We'll give you um, some more information about the website at the end, um, but that's enough looking at PowerPoint slides. Let's move on to some video and actually look at our devices. So now let's take a look at my CI7800 instrument. You can see a front view of it here sitting on my desk. Um, and let me walk you through some of the things about this device. So to start with, we're gonna take measurement right here. And if I pull the sample arm back, you'll see that I've got a 25 millimeter aperture plate put in place. The 
aperture plate itself is labeled as well as one of the indicator lights up here is telling me that I'm set currently to measure a 25 millimeter spot and that the 25 millimeter aperture plate is in place. These plates are metal and they're magnetically attached. So I can just pull that off. You may have noticed that this light went out, um, meaning it doesn't detect an aperture plate on there. As soon as I put this back in place, we'll see it redetect that and the instrument automatically knows which plate is in place. I'll show you later where the other plates are stored that you can swap in and out and it'll automatically detect those as well. The sample arm, let's talk about that for a moment. Um, if I hold it up just a little bit here, you can see it's got a white ceramic backing on it. That's so when you're taking a measurement, if the sample that you're putting in place here that the arm is gonna come up and press against, that sample happens to be transparent, not completely opaque. Any light that passes through will hit this white and bounce back into the instrument. Now, optionally, you can also purchase a black backer that you may wanna use here. And depending on your samples and what it is you're measuring, um, you may want to choose that. One last thing about the sample arm, um, it's got a dampener on it. So if I flip it up, you'll see it kind of catches and slows itself down so it doesn't smash into the aperture plate. Um, if that ha were to happen, we would break the ceramic tile um, that's on the backer. It would also damage the sphere. So we've got a dampened um, uh, sample arm. Lastly, I'll show you that if I want to, I can even pull down the whole door. This allows me, if I've got a sample loaded in here, to actually see what's going to be measured. Um, you can see I can actually put my finger right through there, right, through the opening. I can see what's going to be measured before I take the measurement physically. Again, I'll show you um, in a, a, a different view in a little bit um, an even better way that we have to do that, to see what we're going to measure. So let's talk a bit more just about the app, uh, sorry, the indicator lights. So we talked about the aperture plates being um, indicated here. We've also got lights that tell us that the instrument is currently set for specular included and specular excluded. So it's going to do both of those measurements. Um, most of these lights about configuration like that and some of the others I'll talk about are being controlled by the software I'm using to take the measurement. And we will also talk about that um, in, in just a little bit. So were I set up to do transmission, one of these three lights would be illuminated. I have a, one that indicates I was doing total transmission or diffuse transmission, or if I'm set up to do a haze measurement, which is a combination of those two, right? If I've configured to do any of those kinds of measurements, the, the indicator lights will tell me that. Over on the far right side, we've got a power button, obviously tells me the power is on. Um, a green light that tells me that I'm calibrated. Those lights will change color as I fail calibrate or I fall out of calibration. The time expires, that changes color. Um, I've got a net profiler light. It's telling me I currently have my device profiled. So the light is green. When that profile expires in 30 days, it'll turn a different color telling me I'm no longer profiled. Um, we have a light as well if we were to institute a transform which allows one device to measure more like another device. Um, these right here, it's kind of hard to see what they say unless they're lit up, but essentially what we have are three indicators for the various UV filters, the 400, the 420, and the 460 nanometer filters. If I have any one of those inserted, that will illuminate. And then the upper three are telling me if I'm UV calibrated to meet for example, D65 or a whiteness index. So I have those indicators as well. So that just leaves the three across the top, the three buttons. The one in the middle is about the video preview, um, which I mentioned a bit earlier and we'll, and we'll demonstrate a little later. Um, the camera inside the device actually showing me what I'm gonna measure. This, this is to turn that on and off, okay? The button over here that looks like a target actually is to trigger a reading, to trigger the creation of a new standard. The button over here that looks like an arrow is to trigger the creation of a new trial. And the reason those are there is if you have a very large sample, for example, um, something where the arm might be pulled down, you're not gonna have the arm in place. Now you gotta hold a large sample up here and you've got a hand here so I can reach over and hit this button, but I might not be able to have a hand free to reach over and trigger a reading with my mouse or whatever. 
So I can use those buttons to trigger a reading. Pressing that will make the instrument take the measurement just like I'm interacting with the software. So it's to enable um, that activity easily if you're dealing with a large sample. So that's the, the, the things I wanted to show you looking at the front view of the camera. Um, let's switch over now. We're going to switch to a top view and we'll talk about some more features and functions. So now we've switched to an overhead camera view so you can see the device from, it, from the top. Um, and let me point out a few things. First of all, let's go ahead and take a look at the transmission chamber. I simply pull up on this as a little spring-loaded latch, slide that back and you'll see that it opens up our transmission chamber. The sphere and the illumination happens up here. The lenses and the optics are back here. And you can see these little um, recessed openings. Those are to hold a transmission holder. Um, we're actually gonna do a separate video about transmission and transmission measurements, and we'll talk more in depth about that at that time. I wanted to make, show you the transmission chamber. Um, we'll go ahead and close that. And then I also wanted to show you the drawer. So in the side of the device here at the bottom, there's a drawer that slides out. And what we're storing in that drawer are everything you need to do your measurements. So you've got your white calibration tile that's stored here. You've got your zero cal or your light trap that's stored in here, right? It's got magnets that actually hold it in place in the drawer. Um, if you choose to, you can do a green check tile um, so the green check tile is actually in here. It's a means of measuring that green tile um, after you calibrate to validate your instrument is being consistent in measurement. Got our aperture plates over here. So you can see, for example, here's the six millimeter aperture plate. Show you another one. There's the 10. Remember I talked about how they're auto detected. If you look on the back, you'll notice that they have, it's a little hard to see it on video here. Um, there are some rings in there that are seen by the camera to detect which plate is in place. That's how it knows which one I've, I'm using and which one is in place. Let's go ahead and slide those back in there. Get them out of the way. And then lastly, in this drawer, we also have our white tile for UV calibration, our fluorescent standard. It's stored in this bag, of course, to protect it. I'll just show you that really quick a moment. Oh, whoops. Never a good idea. You can see on the back here, um, it's identified with all of the information we need um, to use that. And we would use that to do a white, um, a calibration for measuring whiteness. If I'm gonna measure something like optical brighteners, I need that. And the way that it works, it's all automated. I put in this tile, I tell the device what whiteness value it's supposed to achieve. And it automatically through a series of measurements and insertions and and removal of the filter um, puts the right amount of filter in so that my UV light gets calibrated so I get the correct UV response. So the drawer, the beauty of all that is that it's all stored right there. Um, no more lost tiles as long as everybody puts things back where they go when they're done. Um, you don't have to worry about having them stored somewhere else and somebody moves them out of the way. It's there, it's tied to the instrument. One last thing about that drawer. Um, there's actually temperature sensors inside of there. So we actually know what the temperature is inside the drawer, temperature and humidity, when you take a measurement. That is also traced um, and, and saved with your measurements. So you can go back and look at the properties of a measurement, know something about the temperature. Now it's gonna be a little warm because of the device itself warming up, but those measurements, you compare them over time, you'll know was the instrument in a warmer state this time than last time. Um, again, a, a way to have an audit trail about your measurements and know some of that information. So that's a look from the top. Let's move on. So now I'm going to show you how we configure the device. Remember all those lights and buttons we saw on the front of the device, as well as, as the video preview. So first, let me go in and show you, um, just by going in here, like I'm going to modify my existing device. I'm in the art our IQC iMatch software here, looking at um, a calibration mode. And if you remember, we had all those things like aperture sizes we can set, um, specular included or excluded, reflectance or transmission, and all of these settings um, that we might make here in the configuration of our device will be reflected on the display of the instrument. So I wanted to show you that just so you, you, you get an idea of how that is controlled. We'll go ahead and close that. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to take a measurement 
And so let me trigger that. I'm also gonna go and turn the camera on, which is gonna kind of overlay the camera um, view of the front of the device here on the software as well. So we'll see that show up here. Just a second, there it is. So you can see the device and you can see I'm in a measurement mode where I would type in the name of my, my color standard, for example, right? Um, I'm gonna call it copper and I'll show you on the camera here what it is I'm gonna measure. So you can see I've got this bar stock that's kind of coppery colored. Now it happens to be exactly 25 millimeters wide. And so positioning that on here and knowing I'm accurate is gonna be difficult. But if you're watching that video part, so I actually have video here that's showing me as I slide it in and out. In fact, you can actually see my finger show up. Right, that's video coming from the inside of the device of the out through the port to see what's gonna get measured. So I can very carefully using that, align this so it gets right there. Oh, went a little too far. You see a little black on one side or the other. It's like a perfect fit once I get it in place. Now I could actually hit next and have the, the instrument go ahead and measure that. You could, he, might be, maybe you heard that or saw that flashing in the background. And just like that, I've got a measurement done and I know very well what I measured. Um, the software will even save this image if I set it up to do it that way. It will save the image with a measurement. So if I ever need to go back and look at a measurement um, and I'm wondering why I got the results I got, maybe it's related to what was measured. Not only something that maybe just fits like in this case, but it's also a great way to know, did someone take a measurement of a sample with a flaw in it? And I can see that very nicely in this image. So that's how we can use this video preview as part of an audit trail when we're doing our measurements and to be sure that we're making good measurements that we can trust the results. So that concludes our introduction to the CI 7000 series of instruments. If you'd like more information, please visit us at www.xright.com. You'll see on the screen, we also have ways for you to contact us via phone and, and to follow us on social media to learn more about x products. Thank you and have a great day.